In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about variables and how to use them. So a variable is just an unknown quantity that represents something. So for example, if you wanted to talk about the you know, number of deaths that occurred last year in a certain city, and you wanted to call that thing X, that's all it would be. Now, you could choose whatever letter you want, X, Y, Z, N, P. You could even choose Greek letters. Often what you'll see is, uh, especially when there's like a lot of things, and you, know, you don't know how many variables you'll want, they'll start calling things like X1, X2, X3, things like that. So to evaluate it, if I were to say, you know, suppose X1 is the number of deaths last year, and that the total number of deaths is 3X1, uh, and something else is 3X1, plus 5, and x1 is the number of deaths, and I said, suppose the number of deaths x1 was 8, what is this equal? Well, all you got to do is, if x1 is equal to 8, well, then you just replace that variable, that unknown, with what it is when you know what it is. So you would say that's 3 times 8 plus 5, and then from there you would simplify it the way you would anything else. 3 times 8 is 24, plus 5 would be 29, and that's that. Now, whenever you're trying to simplify something which has variables in it, like let's say 3x plus 4y plus another 8x or something like that, if you wanted to simplify something like that, essentially what you do is you look for like terms. Like terms are terms that have the same variable and the same exponent. So here, looks like the 3x and the 8x both have the same variable, and that variable x is to the same exponent, 1, x to the first power is just x, and so what you do is you add them. So what that means is 3x plus 8x, it's like saying if you have 3 apples, and then you add another 8 apples, you have 11 apples, right? So similarly, 3x plus 8x is 11x. But then this 4y is something else, it's like you have 11 apples, but then you have these four bananas, and you can't really add them and say that's 15. So you would leave it as 11x plus 4y, and then that would literally be your final answer. If you similarly had something to an exponent, so for example, if you had 4x plus 8y plus 8x squared, well now, even though both of these have x's, they're not the same term. They're, they're unlike terms. They're not like terms because they have a different exponent. x squared is different from x to the first power. So in fact, if you were told to simplify this, the answer is you can't simplify it anymore. You can't combine any of these because it's like adding apples and, and oranges. So finally, there's this thing called the distributive property. You might have remembered it as something like a times b plus c. Whenever you have that, the a gets multiplied to both of these things. So that's gonna equal a b, plus AC, right? Now, one thing to keep in mind is whenever you have a negative, the negative also will distribute. And often you'll have a negative times a negative, you gotta keep in mind that that will then make it a positive. So for example, if you have something like negative two and it's multiplied by five minus X, well, let's see what that would equal. Negative two times five would be, well, a negative times a positive is a negative, that's gonna be negative 10. But then the negative 2 times the negative x, let's see, negative 2 times negative is positive, so that's going to be plus, and then 2 times x is, well, 2x, so that would just simplify to negative 10 plus 2x. Now, this can also go in the other direction, like factoring, if you have, let's say, 5y plus 10xy, and you were asked to factor this, well now, Looking at the anatomy of each of these terms, each of these terms, they have a coefficient, which is just a fancy way to say the number, and then they have variable or variables that are multiplied. So let's see, how would we factor something like this? Well, let's first look at the coefficients. The coefficient here on this first term is 5, and on the second term is 10, and whenever you're factoring something like this, the opposite of the distributive property, with distributive property you multiply, and so to do the opposite, you'd be dividing. So it's sort of like saying, uh, what number goes into or is divisible by both of these. And here, 5 goes into both of these. So if we were to take a 5 out in common between them, what we're left with here in this first term, you're basically dividing this 5 by 5, so you're left with just 1. So that's just 1y, which you could also just write as y. 
And then here, this 10, 10 divided by 5 is 2. So this would be 2, and then you're also left with this x, y. So notice you're not, you're not doing 10 minus 5 and having 5 left over. You're dividing. So since you pull out the 5, you have 2 left over because uh, it, it, that's what 10 divided by 5 is. Now, we don't need to stop here because there's one other thing that can be divided out here. Um, namely, that this term has a y, if we look at the variables, and this term has an x and a y, which means if you divide this by y, you're still going to have the x left. If you divide this by y, you're going to have 1 left. But the point is that you actually can divide both of those by y, meaning you can pull it out. So if you pull out the y in addition to that 5, the first term here you're left with just a 1, and here you're left with just a 2x because the y goes away, and there you go. That's, that's how this is factored. You can always check your answer here. If you were to now expand that out, if you weren't sure if this was the answer, do 5y times 1, and that would be 5y, and then 5y times 2x, and that would be 10xy. So there you go. That, that way you know for sure that your answer is right.